Hello there, all you wonderful IGNU students. I'm Priya Verghese and welcome to Amazing Psychology. Today we'll be taking a look at a very, very small topic. It's called the characteristics of uh, prenatal development. And um, it's a very small topic, but it has still been asked for the exam, so we can't skip it. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, let's take a look at the different questions where the characteristics of prenatal development have been questioned. Um, you can see that it's been asked three times in the previous seven years, and it's always asked in combination with another question. So um, one look at this will show you that it's been asked in combination with the periods of prenatal development, and it's also been asked in combination with the environmental influences that can affect um, the development in an infant. Uh, both of these topics, that is the periods of prenatal development and the environmental influences will be taken in subsequent videos. It's a little too much to take in just one video, so I'll be splitting it up and taking it in different videos. So uh, let's just go ahead and open up our uh, textbooks to page number 20. That's unit 2 of Lifespan Psychology, the first book. So in page 20, we'll just go through a brief introduction and then start uh, by looking through the different characteristics of prenatal development. Let's read the first line together. Prenatal development is the process in which an embryo or fetus gestates during pregnancy from fertilization until birth. It's basically the time period of growth between fertilization and the time till birth. Let's move on to the next page. We go past the objectives and here we go. In section 2.2, the new life begins with the combination of a male sex cell and a female sex cell. Usually what happens is the sperm cell, which is the male sex cell, penetrates the wall of the ovum, also called the egg, of the mother. And when it penetrates, it releases 23 minute particles. These are known as chromosomes, which contain the genetic material of the, um, the father and in the similar manner the egg also breaks up releasing 23 chromosomes of its own these chromosomes come from the mother together a combination of the 23 chromosomes from the father and the 23 chromosomes from the mother give the new individual a set of 23 chromosomes which is a total of 46 chromosomes now um, the female will always have two X chromosomes and the male will always have an X and Y chromosome. We already know that we have pairs of 23 chromosomes in a human being. Out of these, 22 will be autosomes. That's mentioned here. Autosomes are generic chromosomes and the 23rd pair is the one which determines the sex of the child. That is what is represented by XX in the female and XY in the male. Now there are different ways in which the male and female sex cells differ. The first is that the X and Y chromosomes are the sex determinant chromosomes. In the female, there's always an X chromosome, like two X's, and in a male, there's always X and Y. So the sex of the child is determined on whether the sperm that is carried and which uh, penetrates the egg carries an X chromosome or a Y chromosome. Um, if we move further down, you can see this area over here. This portion actually just talks about um, different factors which are important to development uh, depending on the sex of the child. That is the developmental differences amplified because of being a girl or because of being a boy. You can read through that when you have some time. We're just going to skip that because um, we're just going through an introduction at this point. And the second way in which male and female sexes differ sex cells differ is that the male cell goes through two stages which is maturation and the second is fertilization whereas the female sex cell goes through three preliminary stages the first is maturation the second is ovulation and the third is fertilization we'll just look at what each of these terms mean it's given right below maturation is the process of chromosome reduction through cell division one chromosome from one pair goes to a subdivided cell which in turn splits lengthwise and forms two new cells the newly formed cell is called a haploid cell let me explain how that is so when the cell divides 
the um, the genetic material also divides the first the genetic material divides and then the cell divides and so you will have uh, in 23 pairs of chromosomes a, a male cell will contain 23 pairs of chromosomes uh, the newly formed two cells will contain half so when you say pairs it means two of each so if it's 23 pairs there's a total of 46 chromosomes when the splitting takes place one cell will have only 23 chromosomes the other cell which is split will also have only 23 chromosomes so it's exactly half the number that is normally contained in a cell these cells are called haploid cells all sex cells are haploid cells the second stage is ovulation ovulation is the time um, during which the mature egg escapes uh, during the menstrual cycle so a mature egg is released during the process of ovulation so from the ovaries you have mature egg cells these egg cells are released during the process of ovulation and it only happens within females the third step is fertilization this is the time when the male sex cell and the female sex cell which is the egg so the sperm and the egg together fuse and fertilization occurs and a new cell is formed where exactly 23 chromosomes come from the father and 23 chromosomes come from the mother and the mother provides the X uh, chromosome and the father provides either the X or the Y chromosome which determines whether the newly born child is going to be a male or a female. This fertilization or fusion between the sperm cell and the egg cell usually happens when the egg cell is still in the fallopian tube. It hasn't reached down to the uterus. It's always the fertilization occurs inside the fallopian tube. Okay, now let's move on to the characteristics of prenatal development. The first and foremost thing is that it's the most important and the first period in development in lifespan. Um, this is the first and most important period within the development of a child. It is also the shortest period when you consider all the other growth periods of a child, this is the shortest period. It starts from the time of conception, which is the time when the sperm cell and the uh, egg cell together fuse, and it ends at the time of the birth of the child. Normally, this takes around 270 to 280 days and is considered as nine months of a calendar. The next factor is that Many hereditary factors are important and form the foundation for later development of a child. So when you call, uh, when you talk of hereditary factors, you're actually referring to the genetic material, which is the chromosomes that the child has inherited from both the father and the mother. You will see that the hereditary factors determine a whole lot of things within the individual, such as the eye color, the skin color, the, um, the height to which the child will grow, their tendency to have certain illnesses. But these uh, tendencies are actually affected by favorable or unfavorable conditions. But when you talk about favorable or unfavorable conditions affecting it, you will always have to understand that the changes will be quantitative and not qualitative, which means the favorable or unfavorable condition, whichever it is, does not change the eye color of the child. It does not change the skin color of the child. Um, all of these factors can maybe change the quality of the child's development. Like if, you're, if, you're, if the mother is um, heavily malnutritioned, it can affect the child's development and how big the child will grow, but the general features that the child will inherit will always be constant because of the genes that it has inherited. The next factor is again uh, an explanation of what I just mentioned. The conditions in a mother's body um, can foster the development of hereditary potentials. These could be environmental factors that are outside which are affecting the child such as taking of uh, medication during uh, pregnancy or malnutrition. Some of these are the factors that we'll look through in a later video. Uh, another important characteristic is that at the time of conception, the sex of the baby is fixed. The time of conception is the time when the sperm and the egg fuse together. And I already mentioned the female egg always contains an X chromosome. It's the male egg which contains either an X or a Y chromosome sorry, the, uh, the, the male uh, cell, which contains either an X or a Y chromosome, which determines whether the child is going to be a boy or a girl. If it, the X 
um, excel of the um, sperm fused with the X chromosome containing X cell, you get a girl. If the Y uh, chromosome containing sperm cell fuses with an X chromosome containing X cell, you get a boy. Then another fact is that when you look at the proportional time, the greatest amount of growth and development takes place during the um, prenatal period. What you mean by that is that all other developmental phases, if you calculate the development or the range of growth that happens with the time span or the, or the time taken to achieve that development, uh, the proportional growth or the, um, the growth that you see there will be much smaller than the growth that you will see during the prenatal time because it's exponential. I'll show you exactly what that means. The weight of a child during the pregnancy time from the time of conception to the time of birth increases about 11 million times inside the womb. This kind of increase is not seen once the child is born because it takes a longer period of time for it to achieve further growth. And uh, during uh, the um, prenatal time, the child grows from a very minute cell to an infant who measures approximately 20 inches in length and weighs about seven pounds. That is approximately three and a half kgs. Then the other characteristics is that this is the most hazardous period in the lifespan uh, psychology that is the environmental or psychological hazards that happen during this time have greatest impact on the development of a child than during any time after the child is um, after the child is born and the final is that the attitude of the people um, towards the child is also very important for example if the mother has a positive attitude towards the child the child will grow better in the mother's womb but if the mother has a negative attitude toward the child or if this was an untimed pregnancy and the mother wasn't really prepared for it, that will adversely affect the child. I hope this section was clear to you. Um, I will be doing the next section, which is the periods of prenatal development in uh, another video following right after this one. If you have any questions at all, please do send it to me in the comment section. And if you would just like to drop a hello also, I'll be very happy to reply. It just encourages me to have some form of interaction with all of you. Um, please do like the video and share it with someone who is also doing the course. Um, let me know if this was too fast for you because I have been getting requests to quickly finish the portions. So I'm trying to take only the portions which are really important and which will help you answer questions for the exam. But if you feel that I'm going a bit too fast, then please let me know so I can slow down a little bit and help you out. Um, also, please do subscribe to this channel and uh, please hit the bell notification so that every time you, um, uh, I release a video, you will get a notification. Again, once again, I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope to see you guys in the next class. Thank you so much.